Welcome to the third Super Mario 64 Decomp Fast 64 tutorial. In this lesson, we will be going over how to use materials in Fast 64 in order to have visuals for your Super Mario 64 model. Now, in the last tutorial, I told you how to learn how to use Blender using another tutorial series not created by me. Therefore, I'm going to assume you are comfortable navigating and using Blender from this point on. Now, you probably know about materials in Blender, right? Well, throw out everything you learned about materials because Fast64 uses its own independent material system from Blender's. When you go to create a new material, instead of pressing the plus, you press the Create New Fast64 Material button generated by the Fast64 plugin. Now, you'll suddenly see many different material configuration options. They may be daunting at first, but if you follow along, this tutorial will guide you through the different material settings you can use for Super Mario 64. In order to make this simpler to understand, I have created the Fast 64, 64 material, material Preview room. room! This room will show off many of the Fast 64 material configurations without making things too complicated. First. We'll start off with the most commonly used materials. This is a 32 by 32 RGBA 16 flat shaded texture. In English, this basically means a regular texture. Since this is a rock texture, and rocks are typically jagged, using flat shading for this texture is an appealing and good idea. This next texture has the exact same settings as the last texture, but it's smooth shaded instead of flat shaded. This is better for natural plants, hills, and basically any round objects you might have. This is an unlit texture. The last two textures had some form of darkening around the edges, but this texture is completely bright no matter what angle you look at it. This texture type can be used for glowing items like screens or lightning bolts. It also saves performance on the N64, so try and use this whenever you can if you're trying to target N64 hardware. Here, we have a cutout texture. This basically allows you to have see-through holes in your texture. This is good for fences, grates, bars, and decals. This texture type is a bit different in that you have to put it on the right render layer, otherwise the holes in the texture will appear black. Go into the object menu of the cutout texture object and change opaque 0x01 to cutout 0x04. Also keep in mind that this texture type cannot have partially faded pixels. It's either a full pixel or no pixel at all. This material is exactly the same, except I enabled back face calling. This uses a bit more performance on the N64, but it's useful if you want to make it more realistic. This next material is a flat shaded, environment mapped texture. This sort of effect is the same effect you see in the Metal Cap Cavern, being the shiny crystals that line the cave. The neighboring material has the exact same settings, except this time it's smooth shaded. This is the exact same effect that Metal Cap and Power Stars use. So if you're going to make a shiny object, I'd suggest using this material. Alright, time for some materials that are a bit more complicated. This one here is a shaded texture transparent primitive alpha texture. It's a long word for a transparent white texture. The specialty of this texture is that you're allowed to have pixels with different levels of fade. You can also change the base color of this if you want, but you can't have mixed colors with this. This material isn't as frequently used, but it's good for things like realistic water, spider webs, and light rays. Like the cutout textures, you need to remember to put this on the right layer. This next material shows that you can have textures that are completely grayscale. You're probably wondering why you'd want to use this if you can just have regular textures. Well, it's useful to be used in conjunction with vertex colors. Vertex colors are far more performance friendly than shaded textures, and also typically look better than shaded textures if used properly. Keep in mind that if you want to use these, you have to create a vertex group on the vertex shaded object. I'll quickly demonstrate how to create a vertex colored object right now.
This next one is the same as the last one, but the object is on the transparent rendering layer and black vertex colors applied on the alpha layer instead of the color layer will come out as transparent. This is useful for fading one texture into another or a tower fading off into the sky below. Keep in mind that anything with semi-transparency is somewhat performance heavy and will lag if not used wisely. These next two are semi-transparent RGBA16 materials. This means that you can have as many colors as you want but you're limited to one value of transparency. This is useful for slightly less realistic and more cartoony water or stained glass. Note that this one is not a default preset and requires manual adjustment of the color combiner settings. Just copy the settings shown here and you should get the same effect. Finally, remember to put this on the transparency layer like all other transparent objects. The final material I'll be showing today is the plain color material. This is a derivative of the default material created when you click the Fast64 material creation button. This material is useful for solid colored objects and has far more performance gains than a texture, but I highly suggest using textures over solid colors. This type of material is exactly what the Mario model is made up of and can be useful if you're going for a cartoon art style. That's all I have to show for different material types. The last thing you need to know is the maximum texture size allowed. For RGBA 16 textures, the biggest size you can have is 32 by 64 but that can vary with powers of 2. You can also have 16x128 and 8x256. If you want to have a 64x64 64 texture, that is indeed possible, but you are limited to 16 colors, including transparency. You can also mirror textures in order to get larger sizes without using a bigger image, which lets you have a max image size of 128x128 mirrored both ways with only 16 colors. That's everything you need to know about Fast64 materials. Now you can start texturing your models in preparation for the next Fast64 tutorial where we import our own models over top of pre-existing Super Mario 64 models.